Long ago and far away, in enchanted lands across the seas, lived kings and queens, princes and princesses, good fairies and wicked witches, ferocious giants and gentle dwarfs. Their adventures and stories have been told for hundreds of years. Open the pages and listen to the words and you too can join the magical world of Once Upon a Time. The Twelve Dancing Princesses slept in one large room where their beds stood side by side. And every evening when the princesses went to bed, the king locked the bedroom door with a huge golden key. But every morning when he unlocked the door and woke his daughters up, he noticed that all their shoes were worn right through. What's going on? he asked. My daughters were locked up in their room all night and couldn't possibly have gone out anywhere. The king asked all his courtiers if they had seen or heard the princesses venturing out in the middle of the night, but they all admitted that they were as puzzled as he was. He was so keen to find out what was going on that he issued this proclamation. I declare that whoever discovers how and where my daughters wear out their shoes will be able to marry whichever one he chooses and become king when I die. A prince from a nearby kingdom heard this proclamation and presented himself at court. It won't be difficult to solve the mystery of the worn-out shoes. I will simply follow the princesses wherever they go, he announced proudly. The king was very pleased that someone had offered to take up his challenge. That evening, he led the prince to a little room next door to the princess's bedroom. Here, he had his own special bed, and before the king said goodnight to him, he told him, Watch carefully. I want to know where my daughters go to wear their shoes out every night. From this room, the prince intended to listen to and watch everything that the princesses did. He wanted to make sure that they didn't have a chance to escape and he kept the door of his room open so he could keep a watchful eye on things. But the princesses were very crafty and they offered the foolish prince a cup of red wine before bedtime. He thanked them and drank it straight away. In no time, the strong wine had done its work. Soon, the prince's eyes felt heavy and he fell into a deep sleep. he woke up the next morning, he looked at the princess's shoes and saw that they all had holes in them. On the second and third nights it was no different. The prince fell asleep after drinking the wine and the princesses slipped out unnoticed. If only the foolish prince had refused the offer of wine. After the third night, the king felt that the prince had been given enough chances, so he asked him if he had solved the mystery. I must confess that I fell asleep every night, and by the time I awoke, the princesses were back in their beds, said the prince. Please give me one more chance. But the king showed him no mercy for his foolish ways, and the next day he was banished from the kingdom. Let that be a lesson to any suitors who present themselves to me in the future he said. Many more suitors heard about the unfortunate prince's fate, but it didn't put them off. Each suitor who presented himself at court was more confident than the one who went before him, but none of them could solve the mystery. Many months later, 
a poor soldier was walking through the forest on the outskirts of the kingdom. And as he was wandering, he met an old woman. You look lost. Where are you going? She asked in a kind and gentle voice. I'm looking for the king's palace, he replied. I've been told that whoever discovers where the princesses wear holes in their shoes will marry one of the princesses. Perhaps if I can do this, then one day I will marry a princess and be king myself. Well, believe me, it isn't as difficult as you think, said the old woman. All you have to do is avoid drinking the wine that the princesses bring you in the evening, and then pretend you're sound asleep. Then she gave him a little blue cloak and told him, Wrap this cloak around you and you'll become invisible. Then you'll be able to follow the twelve princesses wherever they go. And with a cheery wave, she pointed him in the direction of the king's palace. The soldier was thankful for this good advice, so he went straight to the king's palace and presented himself to the king. I have come to solve the mystery of the worn-out shoes, he said. The king gave him a warm welcome and a set of fine clothes to put on. Then one of the king's servants led him to a room next to the princess's bedroom. The eldest princess greeted him and brought him a cup of wine. Thank you, said the soldier, but he hadn't forgotten the old woman's advice. As soon as the princess's back was turned, he tied a sponge under his chin, so when he put the cup to his lips, the wine ran into the sponge and he didn't drink a single drop. Because he had a thick, bushy beard, the princesses didn't realize he'd done this and they thought he would fall asleep straight away, just like all the other suitors. The soldier then lay down on the bed and to fool the princesses into thinking that he was asleep, he started snoring loudly. Ah, look at him. He's sleeping like a baby, said the eldest princess. She even shook him gently to check that he was really asleep. And when all her sisters were convinced that he was asleep, the eldest princess said, There goes another fool who will have to plead for his life with the king. The princesses then went back into their own bedroom to get themselves ready. The soldier could hear laughter coming from the next room as the princesses stood in front of the mirrors and tried on their best dresses. They were all talking happily about going to a dance, all except the youngest, that is, who said, I don't know why you're all so happy. I've got a feeling that something bad is going to happen. What on earth are you worrying about? said the eldest. Cheer up. In a few hours we'll be enjoying ourselves as we do every night. When they were ready, they took a final look at the soldier just to check that he was still asleep. One of the princesses shook him gently again. But he was a good actor, and they were still convinced he was fast asleep. Then the eldest princess turned to her sisters and said, Come, it's getting late. We should be at the dance by now. She then went over to her own bed and hit it hard. It sank straight through the floor and created a wide opening. All the princesses stepped through this opening, one after the other, with the eldest in front. It's time to turn over to side two.